Hello everybody and welcome on Make It. Happy to see you again for this second tutorial. Today we are going to make a step further into the tiny machine learning world. We are going to deploy a model that try to predict weather on this tiny board, which is nano solid three BLE sensors last time. We'll use three of the Bolden sensors and we'll try to forecast the weather. Let me show you a quick overview of today. As last time, I'm going to show you the pipeline of today. So this is a quick overview of what we are going to do. First thing, as every tiny machine learning problem, we have to identify your needs. We want to predict weather. So what do we need? What do we want to do? We will predict the sky overcast. So to do it, three sensors of this board are temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and barometer. So we use this, this three parameter to forecast the sky overcast, okay? We have to find a data set that includes temperature, humidity, and pressure, and all label, which will be uh, five classes, for instance, partly cloudy, foggy, sunny, overcast, and maybe raining, so we'll see. We have to find a data set that responds to our needs. That takes us to the second step, which is find data set. So we'll go on Kaggle and find data set. So there are a large um, amount of that set on Kaggle that can be used to forecast weather. See how to include the data set that is on Kaggle into Google Collaboratory Notebook, okay? Once it's done, we'll build our model that takes an input temperature, humidity, and pressure, and as output, one of our five classes. So we'll use TensorFlow and Google Collaboratory, but you can also use Jupyter on the screen. After that, our model is built, so we have to convert it into TensorFlow Lite and after that into of light micro and deploy it on board using Arduino ID or VS Code in Platform IO, which I will be using. And after that, we can make inference so we're ready to, to forecast weather. Okay, so I hope you're a bit excited about what we're going to do today. And let's get started. We are finished with the overview. We are going to create, build, train your our model to do it. As I said during the overview, we have to find a dataset. To find a dataset, go on Kaggle, register on it, and we'll use the API. So go to your account and API and create new API tokens that will download you a JSON file containing your key. And after that, we have to upload it into Google Collab, okay? Like this, run the cell, select file, browse to your file. I will select mine, open it, done. As you can see here, if I refresh, I have my JSON file here. I have to create a folder called .kaggle in the root directory, okay? With mkdir, so make directory. I have to copy this JSON file to this new folder, and I have to add writes to this file, this copied file, with write and read, I think. Okay, done. And after that, I don't need this file, so I can remove it by so remove. <laughs> okay, so now the API is set up. We have to find dataset, so go on Kaggle. I've used Istanbul dataset, weather dataset. So we have 10 years of weather for each day. Here is the dataset. You have temperature. Let me select all the columns. Okay, apply. And we also have humidity and pressure and our labels condition, okay? Sunny, partly cloudy, and other labels. We have five classes as output. To use your API and this dataset, click on the three dots here, copy API command, paste it here with exclamation mark and paste it here, run it, and that will use your API to download it. So it's done quite quick. Unzip the file, okay, let me refresh it. I have the zip file and the CSV file extracted from the zip file and we can remove the archive removal. Let me refresh. Done. We have our CSV, CSV file, okay, commerce created this file. We are ready to use it. We need to load it into our Python code and extract our features and set our data set up and use it to train our model. To do it, we'll use a well-known data scientist library called Pandas, okay? This line allow you to download it, so for me it's already done, but I can do it. As you can see, already it's fine. 
import pandas as pd, short for pandas. We have to read the CSV file, so paste the path of the file here. Separator is comma. And we'll store this in 2DF, which is data frame. So data frame is like an array or a matrix. And head print the five first rows of the data set. Run it. All our commands here. You have timestamp, labels for us, rain, and many other features. We only select those who interest us. So condition, our labels. Min temp, this is arbitrary, but uh, we can take max temp, for instance. T humidity and pressure. This will be our features captured with sensor on the nano tree belly and the labels use double bracket to select it run it okay here is our new data set you can print the shape so number of rows and number of columns so four columns and this number of rows okay so let's go to pre-process our data so remove na's na's are empty value here we will cast or class map our labels Oh, sorry. Yes, all labels. We have sunny. We'll cast it into zero. Partly cloudy one, cloudy two, overcast three, and partially rain possible four. And if it's not one of these labels, we drop the row. Okay, for each indexes of the time of for each line. Okay, and after that we have to cast the four and all the numbers into a hint column, and we'll print a new data frame. So here it is. Conditions. Okay. One correspond to Portly Cloudy, as you can see here. So we are ready to convert it into a feature. So to do it, we have to pop the condition column, which is our label. Okay. So df.pop will extract, will separate into two parts, and we'll use two categories called from Keras Utilities, and that will create what we call one hot encoding. We have an array with only zeros and one to the class corresponding, okay? And we have to convert the rest of the three columns here into NumPy array. The, this is the only array that a neural network can take as input. Run it, okay, it's done. I can show you the features. So this is a NumPy array. Each column is an array, okay? And this is an array of array with temperature, humidity, and pressure. The order is really important, okay? Well, you will see that in the C++ part. Here's labels, so I can show you the one hot encoding. As you can see, only zeros and one for the corresponding class. We have our features, we have our labels, and we'll split that into a training set and a test set to evaluate our model, okay? So we'll use test, train test split from scikit-learn, and the test set will be 15% of the total data set. Run it. Everything is set up for data. So we have to now create a model. We will use TensorFlow, as always. TF short for TensorFlow. Here, is, here are parameters. So number of classes, number of outputs. So five outputs possible. This is an arbitrary or neural number, okay? So it can be 30, 60, 10, uh, as you want. I've tried and 30 is the best for me. Number of inputs, okay, so we have pressure, humidity, and temperature, three inputs. And we'll use the ReLU activation function into our layers, okay? So the first layer specify input shape with number of features in a tuple. The dropout remove some connection between neurons, okay, to avoid overfitting. And at the end, we use five neurons and softmax activation function. So softmax will output you an array of five elements, as you can see, but with probability for each class is okay? And the highest one is a predicted one, so we will see that later. To optimize the learning rate, we'll use an ADM optimizer. We will measure loss with categorical cross entropy with categories, so categorical, and we'll measure accuracy. You can print a summary of your model, so let me run it and run it. Okay, here is our neural network. We have a lot of parameters. Okay, and now we're ready to train our model. So to fit, here is our train features, train labels. We'll iterate on 20 epochs. To monitor uh, the learning process of our neural network, we'll use validation that set, so we'll use that set to do it, but in a table. This is really to monitor the learning procedure of the model, okay? We can shuffle data, run it. Okay, so as you can see, the accuracy is really important, so that's a great thing. In 20 epochs, we can evaluate the model, as you can see here with the test set, test labels, and test features, and we'll output the score using it and quarantine it into a percentage with time, 100, okay? Run it. 
and as you can see we have 65 percent of accuracy that's a great accuracy i think so we'll see uh, when deploying it okay so our model is trained okay and we have to convert it to deploy it first thing tensorflow light we'll not quantize today in another tutorial i will explain you how to quantize a model and to use quantization to reduce our model size okay here's the tensorflow light converter and convert it and write it to tf light model not tf light crush it here is a tf light model and after that at the last time we have to install xxd tool to convert it into an hexadecimal array so apt-get install.qq is a unix command to install xxd done and we have to create a dot h so a header file c++ file containing our model parameters echo will print this into model.h will cat and xxd so that will write every parameter in a, an hexadecimal array and we'll finish close the curly brace and semicolon and this line allows you to download the .h file run it quite quick okay as you can see let me click on that here is our neural network okay so an hexadecimal array a big hexadecimal array as you can see here it's done we are ready to deploy it next time let's go on visual studio code and i'm going to explain you step by step the code okay let's go Okay, so let's go to coding Visual Studio Code. Sorry, but today I'm not going to code in front of you because it's too long. I've tried and uh, the tutorial was 50 minutes. That's too long. So I'll explain you step by step. So don't worry, that will be fine. And if you got question, feel free to ask in comments. To use this architecture, I've used Platform.io, uh, a plugin from Visual Studio Code, okay? I've created a new project by clicking here and selecting my word and the name of my project. And that will create this architecture, okay? After that, the first thing you need to do is to copy model.h file into the include folder here. It's already done for me. We have to include our libraries. The first library you need to include is elocant.tinyml. So to do it, let's go on platform I have library and elocant.tinyml. Okay, here it is. Click on that and add to your project, okay? Already done for me. You also have to include the two libraries to use the built-in sensors from the nano sorry tree. This is for I think humidity and temperature sensor and here pressure sensor. Okay. Go on here and write the name of the library, okay, and add to your project. That will add your libraries. Another thing you have to do is to set the monitor speed into platform .ini file, okay, to avoid any kind of problem already done and I've used another library called array.h here it is this is a library from github okay the link will be in the description of the video I will use it to really ease the processing of the output of the neural network okay as output we have an array containing properties we use this library to extract important features okay don't worry it's here you have to add it into array.h close it don't worry if you add it red lines here just close it okay after that we have to define some parameters so number of inputs three temperature humidity and pressure and the order is important outputs five classes so sunny partly cloudy cloudy overcast and patchy rain possible we also have to allocate memory allocate tensor arena this is an arbitrary number found a method to calculate this but I will explain you that in the next video that we'll be probably deploying TensorFlow Lite Micro on board so with, without Elocant TinyML library parameter are set up so we have to instantiate our model space TF Lite class specify the number of inputs, outputs and the tensor arena give it a name to ease the processing of the outputs of the neural network I've created an array containing each label okay so clear, public cloudy and other this is a method that I will explain you later. In the setup, you have, as every kind of Arduino project, begin the serial with 9600 for this board, okay? We have to begin our model with here, model.h file from include folder, okay? Here it is. After that, we have to begin the two sensors, so temperature and humidity sensors and pressure sensors here. 
And in the loop function, we have to get our parameter, put it into the input array, predict, and put it into the output array. Read temperature, humidity, and pressure, it's easy. We have to multiply it times 10 to convert it into hectopascal, as written here. Create an input array containing temperature, humidity, and sensor in the same order as in the notebook. Create an empty output array containing zero, okay, don't worry, but five classes, that's important. And predicts, okay, so you have to specify in the input the input of the predict function the input, so an array, the output an array, and that will fill the output array with probabilities from the softmax. I will print on the serial our three parameters and have you used sky method to output the label so this is the object from this library okay you have to specify the length and the input array which is a float array so this is our output array we use the get max index from this library to get the max index okay and will output the class of this index. Okay, this is a function to create a class mapping, you can call it like that. And just to output the label of the predicted. Sorry, this is uppercase S. Now we're ready. I've got a delay here to slow the serial P. We're ready to upload it into our board. Okay, I'm going to plug it into my computer. Plugged, okay, and let's go to upload. I think it will take 10 minutes, so it's really long. Finished, okay, almost 10 minutes, as I said. Okay, so begin the serial monitor to see the results. Okay, as you can see, you have temperature, pressure, humidity, and the sky forecasting, okay? So this is a great thing. You can test it out outside with your own sky, your own sensors, or other sensors. Okay, you can use it with NESP32 for instance. Okay, it's good. I hope you're excited about it. And if you got questions, feel free to ask in comment or contact me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. I don't I don't I don't mind. Don't worry. I can answer, okay? And in the next video, I'm going to show you a software I've created in C sharp to create data sets for machine learning and to use Arduino sensors to create a set okay stay tuned all the project will be available on git so in the link in the description of the video